I don't even know why I would intend to hit anybody in the eye. That doesn't even make sense to me. But no, I didn't. I didn't know I hit her, actually. That was a flagrant foul. And it's blatantly a foul from Dijanae Carrington onto Caitlin Clark. I was trying to make a play on the ball, and I guess I followed through and I hit her. So obviously it's never intentional. That's not even like the type of player that I am. You know what Caitlin Clark said when she got fouled this hard? Obviously got me pretty good in the eye. It didn't bother me. Obviously it didn't feel too good when it happened, but uh, it is what it is. They caught Caitlin Clark in the eye. Ultimately, she ended up getting a black eye out of it. The WNBA has been rocked by one controversy after another. And right at the center of it all, Caitlin Clark. The star who single-handedly lifted the league to new heights is now the target of malicious attacks, both on and off the court. Your biggest star, your meal ticket, the reason why you have relevancy, just got stabbed and assaulted and nothing. Recently, D. Jonai Carrington made a shocking claim, stating she didn't intentionally hit Clark during a heated game. But we all know the truth runs much deeper than her empty denial. Caitlin Clark was assaulted yesterday in her very first playoff game in the WNBA. First two minutes of this game, this Dijanae Carrington stabbed Caitlin Clark with her fingernails right in the eye. Clark, already a league sensation, has been repeatedly mocked, hit, and even assaulted, yet she remains focused. What Carrington doesn't want you to know is her long history of targeting Clark. It's not worthy of discussion. Where's the mention the Michael Jordan of the WNBA was assaulted, has a black eye because Dijanae Carrington stabbed her with her fingernails in the eye. Dating back to previous incidents that leave little doubt about her intent. But this time, the drama thickens as Carrington and Nalissa Smith's relationship adds a new layer to the story. That Caitlin Clark's goon enforcer has feelings for the opposition's player. Both are tied by more than just the game. They're a couple. And while Carrington defends her actions, Smith stands by, leaving Clark seemingly trapped between them, the target of relentless aggression. There was no foul call. There was no real discussion of it on the ESPN broadcast. In today's video, we'll not only expose the truth behind this toxic dynamic, but also show how Caitlin Clark's impact on the league is undeniable, despite the drama swirling around her. Buckle up, this is one story you don't want to miss. Crazy ass lesbians, the crazy ass OGs, the crazy ass sexist, racist, and been so hateful. No foul call, no refs stopping the game to go, look. is this a flagrant? Let's dive deep into the incident that has everyone talking. The moment Caitlin Clark was hit in the face by D. Joni Carrington during a WNBA game. That was unnecessary. Flagrant anything deemed to be unnecessary. Mm. I need somebody to explain to me why was that necessary. It was one of those moments that left fans and analysts stunned. Not just because of the physicality of the hit, but because of the underlying tension between these players that had been building for quite some time. Do you think that had any impact on the game? Your meal ticket should be stabbed in the eye intentionally and there's no problem here? The play itself seemed chaotic at first glance. Carrington made a move towards the ball and in what looked like a follow through, her hand collided with Clark's face, specifically hitting her in the eye. In your rookie year, all the hate going on yesterday, that idiot Carrington poked her in the eye. I don't know whether it was on purpose or not, but I know a lot of players, myself included, that knew how to do that on purpose. Clark, known for her resilience, went down hard, and immediately the referees blew the whistle, signaling for a review. What should have been just another aggressive defensive play turned into a much larger controversy as soon as the replays hit the screens. ESPN wrote a story after the game that did not mention the first woman to ever be the biggest star in American sports was assaulted two minutes into the game on a dirty play with one of these women with these long fake fingernails that stabbed her in the eye. Slow motion footage showed the full impact with Carrington's arm clearly moving toward Clark's face as she supposedly tried to make a play on the ball. Fans were quick to call out the intent behind the action, pointing to Carrington's history of aggressive plays, particularly against Clark. 
Dijanae has a history with Caitlin Clark. Many of these girls in the WNBA, but she's at the top of the list along with Kennedy Carter in Chicago and Angel Reese. Those three. This wasn't the first time these two had clashed on the court. In fact, if you go back through previous games, there's a clear pattern of Carrington taking shots at Clark, both literally and figuratively. The tension between them had been building, and this incident seemed to be the boiling point. Caitlin Clark's trying to pass the ball in the first two minutes of the game, and this woman swats at the basketball, turn her hand down and her fingernails, and jab him right into the eye of Caitlin Clark. No foul call. No refs stopping the game to go, look. is this a flagrant? But Carrington's explanation after the game only fueled the fire. In an interview, she claimed, I don't even know why I would intend to hit anybody in the eye. That doesn't even make sense to me. This is inexcusable, and Dijanae Carrington needs to be suspended for game two. Carrington should be suspended. It's criminal that there was no flagrant call here. Her statement was followed by another attempt to downplay the situation, adding, I didn't hit her intentionally. I didn't know I hit her, actually. I was trying to make a play on the ball, and I guess I followed through and hit her. So obviously, it's not intentional. That's not even the type of player that I am. Your meal ticket is under constant attack. There's been dirty plays all season. While Carrington may have tried to sweep the incident under the rug with these remarks, anyone who's been following the rivalry between her and Clark knows better. This is inexcusable, and Dijanae Carrington needs to be suspended for game two. There's a long history of on-court tension between these two athletes, with Carrington often at the center of questionable plays involving Clark. Some fans and analysts were quick to point out that this isn't the first time Carrington has used her physicality to rattle Clark. This is simply the most blatant case yet. They're right. moving games, putting them on big time situations. Right. You're jealous. Bigger that ratings. was a Bush League play and it needs to be addressed. And I watched very, very, very physical play from the moment of the tip to the end of the game on Caitlin Clark. So I won't deny that there is a bit of an energy towards Caitlin Clark from the players. The question on everyone's mind is this. How can Carrington claim the hit wasn't intentional when her track record shows a pattern of behavior? Let's not forget the multiple times in the past where she's gone out of her way to throw Clark off her game, whether it be through aggressive screens, hard fouls, or even verbal jabs. Do you know what would happen if she fought back in a real way? She did. She slapped Carrington later in the game. But she's also smart enough to know fighting some angry black lesbians, not her job, and it would lead to a collapse of the league. It seems this latest incident is just another chapter in Carrington's ongoing effort to unsettle Clark, and her post-game comments only make it more suspicious. Obviously got me pretty good in the eye. I don't think it affected me, honestly. I felt like I got good shots. They just didn't go down and obviously a tough time for that to happen. Um, like I got some really good looks. I felt I had, I had two pretty, three wi pretty wide open threes in the first half that like you usually make. So um, that's tough, but I felt like I battled and, and tried my best, um, took care of the ball. It didn't bother me. Obviously it didn't feel too good when it happened, but uh, it is what it is. What's even more striking is how this is being framed by the media. Some outlets have taken Carrington's explanation at face value, while others are digging deeper, questioning the sincerity of her defense. If we look at the play again, it's hard to believe her claim that she didn't know she hit Clark. The slow motion replays tell a different story, one where Carrington's hand seems to follow Clark's face with a level of precision that goes beyond mere accident. Adding fuel to the fire is the context of the game itself. Tensions were already high, with both teams fighting for a key win in the season. Clark was dominating as usual, putting up big numbers and carrying her team. I read this ESPN story. It's not worthy of discussion. Where's the mention the Michael Jordan of the WNBA was assaulted, has a black eye during the second half of the game because Dijanae Carrington stabbed her with her fingernails in the eye. Carrington a fierce competitor herself, was clearly frustrated, and her hit on Clark seemed like a desperate attempt to shift the momentum. 
The fact that the hit happened in such a crucial moment raises even more questions about Carrington's intent. You know, at the level you feel all the praise, that's going to be the same level you feel all the hate. So, like, I feel like I just try to stay right in the middle. That was a flagrant foul. That right. was unnecessary. Flagrant anything deemed to be unnecessary. Mm. I need somebody to explain to me why was that necessary. It's also worth noting that while Clark has faced physical play before, this hit felt different. This wasn't just a routine bump or hard foul. This was a strike to the face, one that could have caused serious injury. Clark's reaction spoke volumes. She went down, visibly shaken, and had to take a moment to recover before continuing the game. For someone as tough as Clark to react this way, you know the hit was significant. Yet, despite the obvious impact, Carrington still downplays it as an accident. The league's handling of the situation has also raised eyebrows. She's going to face a level of racism from black players. I think it is pure, unadulterated jealousy. WNBA, I'm talking players, coaches, and refs. They're all a bunch of Caitlin Clark haters. They're all a bunch of jealous haters. Yep. <laughs> they are just working themselves up about Caitlin Clark just yep. to hate on her. Skylar Diggins is bumping her. The, their girls are complaining on the bench. Referees are getting into it now. They're all a bunch of haters. Some believe more action should have been taken, especially given Carrington's history with Clark. Should there have been a suspension, a more severe penalty? Many fans feel that Carrington got off easy, especially considering how this isn't an isolated incident. Carrington's denial of intent might seem convincing to some, but when you look at the full context, her history with Clark, the nature of the hit, and the intensity of the game, it's hard to see this as just an unfortunate accident. Crazy ass lesbians, the crazy ass OGs, the crazy ass sexist racists of the WNBA that did not make the WNBA anywhere notable over 27 years hadn't been so jealous, hadn't been so hateful. The truth is, Clark has been targeted on the court for a while now, and this hit is just the latest example of how opponents try to knock her down, both physically and mentally. As we move forward in this video, we'll dive even deeper into the dynamics at play here. But one thing is for sure, Caitlin Clark isn't just facing opponents on the court. She's facing a calculated effort to bring her down. And unfortunately, the relationships and tensions off the court might be playing a bigger role in this than anyone's willing to admit. But Nylisa is like this six foot four power forward who should be their enforcer for Caitlin Clark. But you know why she can't be? She's dating and or likes Dejanae Carrington. Th that's how twisted and screwed up this WNBA thing and this sexuality thing is they got going on in the WNBA. Another layer to this drama is the relationship between Dejanae Carrington and Nalissa Smith. The two players are not just teammates on the court, but are also romantically involved, which has added a new level of complexity to the situation. While it's not uncommon for athletes to have personal relationships, this particular dynamic raises questions, especially given Carrington's recent actions against Caitlin Clark. Nylisa Smith, she's dating and or likes Dejanae Carrington. Some might wonder how Smith's connection to Carrington could impact the team environment or the way this incident is being viewed. The fact that Carrington has a partner on her team could influence the way certain plays unfold especially when it comes to interactions with other star players like Clark. For Clark, it feels as though she's caught between two players who share a deep personal bond, further intensifying the rivalry. While Smith has remained relatively silent on the issue, it's hard to ignore how this relationship might be affecting team dynamics, not to mention the broader implications for the league itself. Caitlin Clark's presence in the WNBA has been nothing short of transformative. Caitlin Clark makes the game easier for everybody else. Now Lisa Smith can't hop on board. She's got to get out of there. They need a real enforcer. They need people that have Caitlin Clark's back. Coming into the league with her electric talent and undeniable charisma, she has breathed new life into a sport that many felt was struggling to capture widespread attention. Before Clark's arrival, the league was often overlooked, with only a few standout stars managing to keep fans engaged. But Clark changed all that. From her record-breaking performances 
To her undeniable star power, Clark has reignited the conversation around women's basketball. Viewership has surged, ticket sales are up, and more fans are tuning in just to watch her dominate the court. The Fever averaged 4,066 in attendance last year. This year, 17,035. The Pacers averaged 15,6 last year. This year, 16,528. They beat the Pacers. Fever's average attendance higher than five NBA teams. Clark has brought a level of excitement and energy that hasn't been seen in years. Her fearless attitude and ability to make jaw-dropping plays have made her a household name. And suddenly, the WNBA is on the radar of mainstream sports media in a way it never has been before. If you asked anybody, would you ever see a day where the Indiana Fever outdrew the Pacers, they would laugh at you. This is the effect of Caitlin Clark. Beyond her athletic abilities, Clark has also become a symbol of resilience and determination. Despite facing aggression from opponents like Dijonai Carrington, she continues to shine, proving time and again that she's not just a star athlete, but a beacon of hope for the league. Her impact goes beyond the court. She's inspiring a new generation of young women who now believe they too can take the game to the next level. Clark's ability to single-handedly elevate the WNBA's profile has put the league on a new trajectory. Call out others for what you are doing. They're talking about racism of Caitlin Clark's fans. Claiming racism among Caitlin Clark's fans are actually the ones participating in the racism by celebrating an assault on the court. Where once it struggled to maintain relevance, now, thanks to players like Caitlin Clark, it's poised for a renaissance. She's not just another player, she's a cultural icon, a game changer, and the future of women's basketball. The WNBA has long needed someone to propel it into the spotlight, and Caitlin Clark is that person, proving that her influence is far-reaching and undeniably crucial to the league's growth. Go ahead, Andrea, go ahead, go ahead, I'm not going to let you make it seem like Caitlin Clark was averaging five points a game. At the time, she that. was still averaging 16 points a game, which was more than a lot of other guards that made the team. So don't but do there, that. Don't I'll make it you. seem like she was but averaging five questions. points and this was like a handout. No, nope, it, it wasn't a handout. a handout. Look at her numbers. Look at her numbers Shannon. comparable to the other guards that were on the team. As we wrap up this deep dive into the Caitlin Clark controversy, the relationship dynamics between Dejanai Carrington and Nalisa Smith, and Clark's monumental impact on the WNBA, one thing is clear. The stakes in women's basketball have never been higher. The recent incident on the court highlights not only the physical challenges players face, but also the need for greater accountability and transparency in how these situations are handled. Caitlin Clark, what she's doing doesn't minimize what they've done, but we should have been giving her the credit. We saw the ratings, we saw the merchandise sales, we saw the attendance, but y'all want to make it make it about something else. Oh, what about the women that laid the foundation? What about this? What about it? That ain't got nothing to do with Caitlin Clark. Caitlin Clark is box office. She's doing this. And instead of giving her credit, y'all tried to make it about, oh, y'all poo-pooing the old guard. Y'all never talked about the old guard like this. Nah, I ain't gonna let it slide. Dijonai Carrington's denial of intent raises questions about the integrity of her claims, especially when looking at her history with Clark and the pattern of behavior that seems all too convenient to dismiss. The dynamics between Carrington and Smith, though less explored, also cast a shadow on the broader narrative of sportsmanship and fair play. Yet, amid the turmoil, Caitlin Clark's star continues to rise, proving that her impact goes far beyond the court. White girl is successful. White girl more popular. White girl must be bad. Bad white girl. We see it in politics with bad orange man. And of course your fans are racist. You racist! She has taken to two things that, well, most women go to in sports when it's not going their way. Shaking their ass and calling people racist. We understand that the world that we live in can easily be defined by white racist, white bad. You're rooting for a white guy, bad. You're wearing a Make America Great Again hat. Think about that. Make America Great 
Again, oh, you don't understand. That has racial connotations. No, it doesn't. When it's not going well for you, claim racism. When it's going well for you, claim victim slash racism. We get it. We understand. And frankly, I just laugh at it. She has become the face of a revitalized league, drawing in fans and media attention like never before. Her resilience and performance are not just shaping the current WNBA landscape, but are also setting a new standard for future generations. This situation is a reminder of the power of individual athletes to transform their sports and the importance of addressing every aspect of the game with fairness and respect. As always, thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you never miss out on the latest updates and in-depth analysis. Keep the conversation going in the comments below. What are your thoughts on the incident and Caitlin Clark's influence on the WNBA? Until next time, stay informed and stay engaged.